You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. Brian Kelly on Thursday introduced his offensive staff that included Mike Denbrock, the new offensive coordinator. Uh, and Denbrock left Cincinnati, of course, a playoff team. He had previously worked with Brian Kelly. He left uh, Cincinnati to come to LSU. And Denbrock talked about his decision to leave Cincinnati, jump into the SEC, and back on Brian Kelly's staff. Obviously, playing in the SEC West and being part of a conference and, and football at its highest level in college uh, was very attractive. Uh, I'm, I'm a person that loves to challenge himself and loves to put himself in a position where I've got to learn and grow and develop uh, and continue to, to, to grow my knowledge of the game and my understanding of the game. Uh, so that was a big piece of it for me. The other piece of it was watching over the years from afar all the great offensive talent in particular uh, that has played at this great school. And those are the guys that we want to make proud of what we're doing here. And I wanted to be a piece of solving that issue for this university in particular and, and, and letting those guys that have played here and set the framework and the groundwork for who we are and what we can become be the standard for what we're going to be moving forward. Uh, $1.3 million a year doesn't hurt either. It's significant. Uh, but yes, everything he said too is completely legitimate. The, um, but there's a lot of questions uh, about how this is going to function. Right, because not only is it a new head coach, but it's an offensive-minded head coach with a new coordinator, and there's going to be a, there's some familiarity with those two. But what about the rest? Um, here was Den Brock on the type of offense they're going to run, and there's a piece in here that I'm going to earmark. I'll I'll revisit when we come back to it, but um, but see if you notice it too. I would describe it at this very moment in time as a work in progress. There is a base of what we will be. We're going to be a team that plays physically tough, is going to run the football with effectiveness, is going to have the ability to stretch the field vertically and create explosive plays, uh, whether that's in the run or the pass game. Uh, and we're going to have a, a workable drop back game where we can uh, make sure that if we get into situations where we've got to throw the football, we throw it effectively and efficiently. You know, we're a personnel driven offense at its core, which means it's multiple enough that we can do what we need to do with whichever personnel group we decide to do it with. Can't run the same plays out of the same looks every down and have success against the defenses that we're going to play against. You know, to say that we're going to run my offense, it would be pretty arrogant on my part, especially considering the talent that's in this room. We're going to run an offense that's LSU's offense. Love the part where when he talked about being multiple, he talked about playing toward the personnel. And that's just not always been the case here. Uh, despite the immense talent that LSU has had offensively. At one point, um, he even said, Den Brock, talk, when talking about physicality and running the game, said we could tell him point where we're going to run it, we're going to run it there and still be effective doing it because he wants to be a physical brand of offense. I think that's important. I mean, there's going to be times where you have to ice games away, but a big part of that, of course, is having a big, physical, competent offensive line. And I know that's something Brian Kelly talked about a lot today, which we'll get to in a second. But here, the other big question is, is play calling duties. You have an offensive-minded head coach who has called plays during his career, and you're bringing in an offensive coordinator who left a great spot in Cincinnati where he was the OC for a defensive-minded head coach in Luke Fickle. So what about divvying up play calling duties? This is how Brian Kelly answered it. Delegating those responsibilities was, was not very difficult for me because for my time, it, it was so important that I spent more time with the players uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And so if you're in meeting rooms and you're tied up most of the day, you know, with the other things, the collateral responsibilities that fall on the head coach, it's very difficult to build the kind of relationships you want with your team. So it allows me to be in the training room. It allows me to be at meal. It allows me to do other things 
Yankees and and build those relationships with our players. Now, look, I'm still responsible for the football. The head coach is responsible. So this is not a detachment from from anything. Um, I'll meet with our coordinators. I'll be in offensive meetings and defensive meetings. But there's a difference between full detachment and, you know, still as the head coach, be responsible for end of game situations, timeouts, appropriateness relative to fixing things, you know, as they go. And I'll still be involved in those things. You know what that says? You trust the guys you hire to do the job you hired them to do. That's something not every head coach can do, especially if you're a first-time head coach. A lot of first-time head coaches struggle with that, with learning to delegate and to trust the staff they've hired to do the things they hired them to do. That's why it's important to hire great staff. See, Brian Kelly has already figured that out. He's been around long enough and done it long enough. So a big part of figuring out this offense of course, it's going to be the quarterback play. Right now, you've got three. Miles Brennan returns. Of course, you've got Garrett Nussmeyer returning, who took the red shirt last year. And you're going to welcome in Walker Howard. So, uh, here was Mike Denbrock sort of assessing his quarterback room as they head into spring. It's going to be an interesting spring for Coach Sloan and, and, and for all of our offensive units. Spring football is going to be a little bit of us figuring out exactly what we can be. Uh, and what we can become throughout the process of building this offense. We haven't had an opportunity to really be on the field and work with these guys all that much yet, but it's coming, which is good. So we can really gauge where that's it, and then we'll, through kind of giving the, the quarterbacks the information they need to be successful, give them opportunities within the spring to kind of show who really fits into what we're best at doing and let that competition play its way out and, and make sure that the best guys out there are giving us the best chance to win. You did not hear any commitment at all to Miles Brennan or to one player. Um, and, and I like that. Now, on this show, we've talked to Jamie Howard, Walker's dad, and Jamie has said on air that he's okay with Walker redshirting. They're, they're okay with it. Uh, Jamie's a guy that played early in his college career, took some lumps as a player early in his college career, and I think looks at his and is smart enough to look at his son and say, it's not always a bad thing to sit and watch and learn and wait and mature mentally and physically and grow toward the college game. Like that could be a really good thing, you know, for Walker Howard to sit and watch and wait his turn. Uh, or maybe he comes in and wows everybody and wins the job. Either way, if it goes that way. But I guess the, the good thing is you don't feel pressure if you're Den Brock or Brian Kelly to rush Walker Howard onto the field right away. I think the more interesting question is going to be Garrett Nussmeyer. If Nussmeyer doesn't beat out Miles Brennan, does he stay? And then you go into the spring or coming out of spring looking at a very real situation where you say, okay, do you need to go look at another quarterback in the portal because you cannot go into this season potentially with two scholarship quarterbacks? So um, it's going to be a very pivotal spring from that respect. And you're going to lose guys. I mean, it's just, you always have turnover when there's a new coaching set. That's not something that's unique to Brian Kelly. It's not anything that LSU is doing. It's just when you have a new staff, with new guys and new coaches and new expectations and new schemes, some guys are going to leave and other guys are going to come in. And you've already seen that a good bit. And I think you're going to see another wave of that post-spring. Um, Mike Denbrock also talked about the offensive staff as a whole. And they've turned over the entire staff except for Brad Davis. So uh, he's the only returning offensive staff member. Everyone else is learning each other. And here was Den Brock talking about that offensive staff. It's very easy for me to feel comfortable in this role, mainly because of the other men that are in that room with me. Coaches talked a lot about each one of those guys. Let me just say, from my perspective, none of us had worked together before. We kind of met for the first time uh, after we finished the recruiting campaign. And walking into the offensive staff room for the first time with these guys uh, was like walking into a room with people that I've known my whole life. And that is so important, I think, not only that our players understand the relationship that we have and how we work together, but what makes that possible is that these guys being great recruiters, great football coaches, that to me is, is an awesome piece of it. What they are is great men. And when you assemble a staff like that, as Coach Kelly has, uh, you give your players the best opportunity possible uh, to be good at what they do, and not just good at what they do, but great at what they do. Uh, new LSU offensive coordinator Mike Denbrock talking about the staff that's assembled, which of course includes Frank Wilson coming back to LSU, Cortez Hankton coming over from Georgia in that passing game coordinator role. 
Uh, Brad Davis, as we mentioned, being retained as the offensive line coach, and then Joe Sloan coming in as the quarterbacks coach. So he'll work coming in from Louisiana Tech. He'll work specifically with these quarterbacks. Um, one more from Brian Kelly, though, on Joe Sloan. As we've talked a little bit about quarterbacks, here's getting to know uh, the coach who comes in from Louisiana Tech. You know, from an offensive perspective, is coached uh, the wide receivers and the quarterbacks. Um, we all know Louisiana Tech's offensive structure and system, quarterback centered, and uh, Joe's a bright coach that uh, really understands uh, what we're looking for in our quarterbacks and the ability to develop quarterbacks. And that's really what this is about. It's quarterback development. And then, again, as I mentioned, uh, being in the state for as long as Joe has been, um, he's got great ties, great relationships, um, and understands uh, the recruiting process uh, throughout the state. So we talked play calling, we talked scheme, we talked responsibilities, talked quarterbacks. The other thing that jumped out to me today was comments not only from Brian Kelly, but also from Brad Davis about the offensive line. First, here's Brian Kelly. Um, Brian Kelly was asked about how to have success on the offensive line. I think it was Cobble that asked the question, and it was it was along the lines of, you know, there was a school in the West, obviously he's referring to Alabama, who's put a lot of guys in the pros on the offensive line. Well, how do you do that? What's your philosophy? Because Kelly has had a lot of success. And we've played often here a cut from Brian Kelly from his introductory press conference talking about his approach to the offensive line. He went in a little more detail today. I have a profile in mind, and Brad and I and Mike and, and everybody in the offensive staff has discussed what that profile looks like. And, and so, you know, we're going we're gonna to recruit to that profile and, and we're going to develop to that profile. I think, I think one of the keys to that without, you know, getting into too much by position group would be that offensive linemen can be developed. And it's a position that I look towards as a position of development. And that's physically as well. You don't have to come in ready-made as an offensive lineman. And um, may maybe that's a bit of a change in, in a mind's eye relative to a profile. You know what that says to me? Scouting. You're not afraid to take the three-star guy if you think he's got the... You're not afraid to take Fitzgerald West if you look at him and you say, we can make that guy into a starting center. Interestingly enough, uh, Brody Miller tweeted this. So there were breakout sessions individually with all of the offensive coaches after Mike Denbrock and Brian Kelly were on the, the podium. There were You could do individual interviews with the other coaches, and Brody tweeted this. He said, Brad Davis has been training six players to learn the center position. Martinez, Macaneoli, Spencer Payne, Charles Turner, Fitzgerald West, and Garrett Dellinger. Said Brian Kelly has commissioned him to develop a center with the current roster. How about that? I mean, we've sort of assumed here that you're either looking at, you know, does Charles Turner take that step up? Could it be one of the transfers coming in? Could Tremont Short slide inside and play center? That's not one of the guys they listed right there. And maybe it could be Garrett Dellinger as a guy where you say, look, you, you brought in transfers at tackle you you brought in two transfers at your know, offensive tackle you're you signed the five-star offensive tackle you brought in a a bullish guard in Tremont shorts you got Anthony Bradford returning if you feel like Garrett Dellinger is one of your best offensive linemen you need a way to get him on the field maybe that's it you don't have a center you don't have an obvious answer at center maybe Charles Turner takes that step up and, and wins it maybe Fitzgerald West steps in as a freshman and wins the job Maybe Martinez or Macanaoli, that's their path to the field. Or maybe it's Garrett Dellinger. But if you're trying to get your best five on the field, maybe that's the path to doing it. So that's another very interesting position battle we're going to watch in spring. Is six different guys right now are cross-training to learn the center position, according to, uh, to Brad Davis. That's going to be a fascinating spring as uh, this roster, the whole approach to LSU football is uh, made over under Brian Kelly and this new staff. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.